if I were to ask you what your least favourite update in Minecraft was, I'd have a few safe guesses as to what it might be. It could be update 1.19, the WoW update, that added the infamous chat report system. It could also be the 1.10 Frostburn update, a lackluster update with uninteresting new mobs, such as the Polar Bear, the Stray, and the Husk. Or maybe it's the 1.13 Aquatic update. The update that destroyed Minecraft's optimization and made Optifine compulsory to run the game smoothly. But even though these updates are popular contenders, none of them would hold a candle to the number one spot. Most of you might have guessed it, and some of you might even hate it yourself. The most controversial Minecraft update to this day is update 1.9, the infamous combat update. My name is Zaylerance, and welcome to episode 3 of Minecraft's Most Controversials where I discuss features in Minecraft that a lot of people like and a lot of people hate. Let's get into it. While other updates have their fair share of people that dislike it, people will eventually just come to tolerate them for what they are. 1.9 stands out for this reason, because it is the only update in history that has quite literally split the community in half, in more ways than one. This is because the people that hated it then, still hate it today. The hate for the update goes a bit deeper. To explain why, we have to explore a brief history around combat. However, combat in Minecraft before 1.9 is vastly different from the combat we're all familiar with today. Talking about the old combat system could be difficult, because it's hard to discuss a feature that doesn't even exist anymore. So rather than telling you about it, it's better if I showed it to you, before the update that changed everything. Hop onto my time machine, we're about to go back in time and see what combat in Minecraft was like before the update. Oh yeah, this time machine doesn't actually work. I just wanted to be cute and have like some form of continuity between each time period. Welcome to Minecraft 1.8, the bountiful update. Elytras weren't in the game yet, so horses and minecarts were the main form of transport. Glass used to look like this. Absolutely hideous, but almost charming in its own way. And make sure to check out the new Ocean Monument. I heard there was a new boss to fight there. Combat worked much differently in this era. Cooldowns weren't introduced yet, so your focus was less on the timings of your attacks and more on maximizing combos, using the knockback on your attacks to keep your opponents from fighting back. Swords dominated as a weapon. They were the best weapon at every phase of the game, from wood to diamond. And on top of that, they double function as a shield. You could block attacks by right-clicking with a sword. But rather than blocking an attack entirely, they only block half of the damage and half of the knockback. For those of you who've recently started playing Minecraft, aka you Minecraft Zoomers, crouching and blocking was a method of greeting back then. And that's pretty much all of it. In an extremely simple sense, Combat did somewhat boil down to spam clicking, which is why auto-clickers could get you banned most of the time. However, there was still skill expression in it that was harder to notice. If you attack twice while sprinting, your second attack will have a weaker knockback than the first. But if you reset your sprint in between attacks, both attacks will have the stronger knockback. In a sense, if everyone was equally terrible, the winner went to whoever had the highest CPS. But how fast you click wouldn't matter against a player who knew how to combo you. Overall, it worked somewhat fine as a combat system. Low skill floor, high skill ceiling. And if it wasn't broken, there was really no need to change it. Now let's move on to the time that Mojang changed the combat system. Welcome to Minecraft 1.9, the combat update. You can see that everyone really liked this update with no complaints whatsoever. <laughs> 1.9 made a lot of changes, and covering all of them could be a separate 10 minute video of its own. Such as brewing stands now requiring blaze powder as fuel, beetroot being added into the game, mending and frostwalker being added, I'm sure the entire community loved them, as well as NCTs and Elytra, I'm sure everyone loved those too. <laughs> but for now, let's focus on the most divisive part of it, the main purpose of the entire update. Attacks now have cooldowns and won't do the full damage until it's fully charged. Swords have sweep attacks and faster cooldowns. Its block function was removed and replaced by the shield. Axes have more damaging attacks that disable shields but at the cost of slower cooldowns. Dual wielding was added to the game, mainly for players to hold both swords and shields. Armor protections were nerfed to balance out the reduction in DPS. 
And finally, spectral arrows and tipped arrows were added to the game. But let's be honest, you probably forgot they existed. On February 29, 2016, all of these changes were rolled out and the entire combat system was revamped. And the community instantly showed how happy they were with these changes. Why was Minecraft 1.9 so bad? Why Minecraft 1.9 sucks? 1.9 PvP sucks. New 1.9 PvP sucks. Mojang, it's time to talk about Minecraft Why the combat. New combat system sucks. Minecraft 1.9 sucks. Minecraft 1.9 sucks. To say that these changes were controversial would be a massive understatement. It was such a controversial change that the new combat system will be exclusively applied onto Java Edition. While Bedrock Edition kept the old combat system even to this day. It had such an effect on Moyang that they followed this up with the most empty and pointless update in history. 1.10 Adding strays, husk, and polar bears as mentioned, as well as adding red nether bricks, bone blocks, nether ward blocks, and magma blocks. The last of which wouldn't even get its bubble column feature until 1.13. After that, things went silent. 1.11 would be released, followed by 1.12 and 1.13. But after years of inactivity, Moyang finally broke their silence on the combat changes. On the 8th of February 2019, three years after the combat update and at the end of the aquatic update, Jab would shift his attention back onto combat mechanics, making a highly detailed tweet saying, Combat mechanics. He would explain that he wanted Java and Bedrock to have the same combat mechanics moving forward. Perhaps there was hope. Perhaps 1.9 status of infamy wouldn't last. Perhaps Jeb could be the one to save the combat system of Minecraft. And on the 26th of June 2019, he would deliver. The combat snapshot introduced a combat system that makes both new and old mechanics. This combat system was going to fix these problems and quell the controversies once and for all. Cooldown between attacks are still there, but now you can only attack once the cooldown is finished. However, you can now hold to rapid fire your attacks. If you choose to wait between attacks, you will get an increase in range and an increase in knockback. On top of cooldowns to worry about, this update also adds attack range as a factor you have to consider between weapons. Tridents and holes now have the longest attack range at 3.5 blocks. Swords remain the same with an attack range of 3 blocks, whereas every other form of melee has been nerfed from 3 blocks down to 2.5. Swords also no longer made sweeping attacks when fully charged, unless they had the sweeping edge enchantment. Axes now have a new enchantment called Cleaving, that increases the damage dealt and increases how long a shield will be disabled for. Shields now activate when sneaking, allowing you to shield and attack at the same time. But players can now bypass shields by either attacking with an axe or dealing a critical strike. Bows now become inaccurate if you hold them down longer than 3 seconds. And damage per attack was adjusted across the board to balance out the new DPS values of each weapon. These changes received very positive feedback from the community. Kind of like how this video receives positive feedback from you if you're enjoying the video so far. It genuinely seemed like both fans of old and new combat were excited for these changes. It almost seemed too good to be true. And in a way, it kind of was. In 21st of August 2020, Wow, this year really sucked, didn't it? Jab would release the final combat snapshot, and that would be the last we ever heard of it. This follow-up introduced adjustments to the sword and the shield. And from then on, it was back to total silence. What was once believed to save combat once and for all would be abandoned and left to be forgotten over time. While there are plenty of potential reasons that Jeb essentially placed the second combat update on an indefinite hiatus, the likely explanation was that Jeb had to shift his focus once 1.17 came around. After 1.16, Mojang had the difficult task of releasing an update right after what was quite possibly one of their best updates to date. And on top of that, the COVID-19 pandemic happened, which definitely had an impact on the update's development. This led to them overpromising features and under-delivering on these promises. The update would end up being delayed and eventually be split into two parts. Jad may have had his hands full fixing all the issues and was forced to abandon the combat updates temporarily. With 1.19 fully released and 1.20 on its way, all we can do is hope that Jeb picks up from where he left off and make it an official update in the future. For now, let's go back to the original topic and look at the timeline of everything so far. Because I think this highlights the first major reason as to why 1.9 was so controversial. The combat changes were permanent and irreversible. 
In the first episode where I covered the mending enchantment and in the second episode where I covered the elytra, there was a recurring comment in both of these videos. If you don't like it, just don't use it. I mean, if you're against it, why don't you don't put it on your tools or equipment? <laughs> just don't use mending if you don't want to. If you don't like it, don't use it. If Simple. you don't like mending, just don't if use it. If you don't want to use it, you literally don't have to. If you to. don't like mending, don't just use don't it. Get it. They can just not use it. No. Don't have to just use, don't it. use it. Just don't 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 use it. These comments highlight why some people still despise the combat update to this day even though it's been 7 years since the update. The changes to combat weren't new features added into the game, like Mending or the Elytra. Even those that weren't too enthusiastic about these features could simply ignore them and play the game as if they never existed. Whereas those that hated the combat update were stuck with two very polarizing options. They can remain in 1.8, stay with the combat system they were comfortable with, but be completely cut off from every new feature that Moyang had to provide or update to 1.9, permanently dish the combat system they were familiar with and never look back. Play the game in more than 1.19, but the moment they want to have a PvP experience they preferred, the game had to be downgraded to 1.8. Combat must have felt painfully slow when moving between the two systems. And with how Mojang implemented the new combat system, they didn't make it any better for those who are already anxious. You see, the second point of controversy stems from the fact that the combat update was implemented through direct changeover. Let me explain. There are four methods of implementation. Direct changeover, parallel running, pilot running, and phase implementation. Direct changeover is when an old system stops being used and is immediately replaced with a new system. Parallel running, as the name suggests, is when the old and new system is run alongside each other. If the new system functions better, the old one will be discontinued and the new one will be used exclusively. Pilot running tests a completely new system in one department of the company as an experiment. If this new system works, then it will be introduced to the other departments. Finally, phase implementation implements the new system one part at a time, and if it works, another part is implemented and tested. If that works too, the next part is implemented and tested, and so on. It's similar to pilot running. But instead of one department with an entirely new system, it's every department with a partially new system. The new combat system was implemented with direct changeover. And the pros and cons of it are exactly what you would expect. It was the fastest way of changing from one system to another, and it saved the most resources. If the new combat system was received with overwhelmingly positive feedback by the community, Moyang will be rewarded with maximum returns, and everyone will be happy. However, these high returns came with high risks. The old system is completely removed, so there is nothing to go back to if the new system fails. In other words, if the player does not like the combat changes, well, you know what happens. Fembo. This brings up all sorts of alternate timelines. What if Mojang implemented the newer system with a different method? Maybe if they implemented the combat changes through phase implementation, then 1.9 wouldn't have been nearly as controversial as it is today. Rather than having the snapshots introduce new features one by one, the features could be introduced as multiple official updates. In 1.9.1, they'd add dual wielding to see how it vibes with the community. In 1.9.2, they'd remove blocking with swords and introduce shields to the game. And then in 1.9.3, they'd reward axes and swords to have their attack timers like they do today. If any of these changes weren't received well by the community, Moye could just pull a firefly and just yoink them out of the game. There's also the option for a parallel implementation. Perhaps Mojang should have added a game rule that allowed players to set the combat system they wanted, letting them toggle between the old and new combat system, whichever they preferred. Dedicated 1.8 servers could finally update to the latest version and simply just opt for the old combat system, while more modern servers get to function as they normally do. However, the cons of this method are the operation costs. I imagine that having separate combat rules available as an option is probably easier said than done. And having to stop both versions of combat may not be the best for the game's already bad optimization. But this will give the consistency across all versions of Minecraft like Jet would have wanted. But these are what could have happened in hindsight. We'll never truly know what would have happened had things gone differently. And even then, the damage has been done. Update 1.9 will forever be a sensitive topic within the community and for Mojang. But I want to end things on a more positive note. Maybe Jeb will return and finish the combat snapshot, and we'll receive a second combat update. 
Maybe Moing adds an option for players to choose whether they want a 1.8 or 1.9 combat system as mentioned. And 1.8 players will finally know what it's like to suffer with the rest of us once they meet the Phantoms. Only time will tell. Over time, I found myself liking these changes. I like the idea of a combat system that rewards you for timing your attacks. I just find it more interesting to see who times their attacks better rather than who runs weirder and who bullies you harder. But I also don't play on any of the popular PvP servers. I have zero <coughs> games played on Bed Wars, and even to this day, I am absolutely trash at both systems of combat. So... Opinion discarded. There is a very good reason why the most popular server in Minecraft and a good portion of the community is still playing on an almost decade-old version of the game and a very good reason as to why 1.9 will remain as the most important update in Minecraft history, for better or for worse. But I personally think that the community wasn't even hating on the right thing in 1.9. 1.9 also added an expansion to the end dimension, introducing entities, coarse fruits, shulkers, and the elytra. Even though two of these features are absolutely essential for survival worlds in the game today, believe me when I say that the end is without a doubt one of the worst features of Minecraft. However, explaining why the end is so terrible will require an entirely separate video of its own. Which is why you should check out this video where I explain why the end of Minecraft is outdated and boring, and why it desperately needs an update like the Nether update. I'll see you there.